Okay, you better make yourself comfortable because this is a story time and this camera cannot focus on me because it's so distracted by other things. Hey everyone, welcome back to my YouTube channel. That just, I don't know, it just sounds kind of weird to say like, hello, welcome back to my YouTube channel. Um, it's just something that I'm not really like used to or I feel weird kind of saying. Um, that's just like me though, like everyone else who does that, by all means, that's great. If it works for you, it works for you. For me, it just, it just doesn't. I just kind of like to jump in on things, you know? I've been wanting to film this story time video for quite some time. Uh, I've always been a little bit nervous filming it. Uh, I've actually tried filming this so many times and it just never went as well as I wanted it to be. And there were times where I just felt way too anxious telling the story and I just stopped filming it or I just felt like it wasn't really good enough. I just started getting really self-critical. I am trying, I'm gonna try to film it today. So please pray for me. So when I first moved to Ho Chi Minh City, uh, I wasn't quite sure whether I wanted to learn how to drive a motorbike or a scooter. Only because I've read a lot of horror stories and heard a lot of horror stories about like driving a motorbike and I honestly just wasn't sure if I was capable of riding a motorbike in the city. So I just started taking Grab everywhere and Grab um, is actually the state's equivalent to Uber. So Grab in Southeast Asia works a lot like Uber. You can order a car, you can order a motorbike, you can order food, which I do a lot of. And yeah, it just works a lot like Uber, but here in Southeast Asia, it's called Grab. I was planning to do that most of the time living here, but uh, after like a month or two of living here, I just, I just got tired of taking grabs everywhere. Um, I just, because I didn't want to just go from like A to B, like I want to be able to stop whenever I want to. I want to be able to go at my own pace, like I want to be able to explore on my own. I'm a pretty spontaneous Ooh, I just spit. I'm a pretty spontaneous person, so I just don't like having everything kind of controlled. I like being able to go with the flow. I mean, the best way to discover a place is just to drive around and see like, oh, that's interesting, and then just go there, you know? But fuck it, I'm going to take motorbike lessons. I need to learn how to drive a motorbike. I wanna get around, like I wanna be able to go wherever I want to. So I guess I'm just going to have to learn. Um, I'm actually pretty thankful that being on the back of so many like motorbikes and taking grab for like two months uh, really taught me how to really uh, maneuver around traffic in Ho Chi Minh City. Uh, I would say like being on the back of a motorbike that was probably about like 60% on how I learned how to drive a motorbike. I took my one hour lesson from a really nice bike company here in Ho Chi Minh City. I'm also renting my motorbike from them and it was actually like not that bad. It was quite easy learning how to drive a motorbike. After the first day of my one hour lesson of learning how to drive a motorbike, I had to drive on my own the next day because I had to go to work. A few weeks after uh, learning how to drive a motorbike, my friend and I decided that we wanted to explore the Chinatown of Ho Chi Minh City. So my friend and I drove our motorbikes all on our own. And we explored the city, had a lot of fun, got food, and we were planning to go to the gym later that night together. And because uh, Ho Chi Minh City can get really condensed with traffic, we were like, Okay, um, I'll just meet you at the gym uh, instead of just following each other because it's really hard to follow each other. We'll just meet each other at the gym. Good luck. See you in a bit. So when I was in traffic, uh, I had motorbikes all around me and even cars. So cars and bikes share a lot of the times in traffic, they share the same lane. So you will have like bikes in between cars, buses. It gets really sandwiched. So can you imagine just being a driver and being sur surrounded by so many people and having to be really careful not to like run over any bikes? There are some serious blind spots here in Ho Chi Minh City and you have to be really careful about it. Uh, what's nice about like living here in Ho Chi Minh City, it's it's taught me to really become more aware of my surroundings, especially as a driver. Uh, so I remember being in traffic and being surrounded by cars and bikes, literally almost like shoulder to shoulder. I wasn't in the very front of the stoplight, I was probably in the center. So the light turns green, people on my right, in front of me and behind me slowly moving forward. And I can't really go anywhere because I'm still kind of like sandwiched in between other motorbikes. 
Uh, I hear a car honking behind me on my left side. His right mirror hit my left mirror. I like bang on the car to let them know like, hey, you just hit my mirror, you need to stop. But this car just keeps going. I have to figure out what the fuck am I going to do? I try to move a little bit to my right, but I can barely move because I still have people on my right side, like shoulder to shoulder to me, can't move either. This car's tire run over my foot. It felt like the slowest moment of my life, literally as this car is running over my foot. Oh man, I'm really getting my foot ran over by this car right now. What is my life? <sighs> it felt like it was like the longest 10 seconds of my life. It probably wasn't even 10 seconds. I think it was maybe like three seconds. After this car runs over my left foot, my bike and just like kind of like hovering over, trying not to break down and cry hysterically. And I'm holding it in and all these bikes behind me are honking at me and I think they're asking me if I'm okay. They're telling me to go. I just sat there for like maybe like 30 seconds and I put my hands up and I was like, just go around me, just go around me, just go around me. After that happened, I pulled up on the side of the road next to this lady who was selling uh, like I think coffee, tea and juice. And she pulled out a stool for me and tried asking me if I wanted to sit. but. Usually when something big like that happens and it's so embarrassing and it's so painful, I just shut down and at that moment, I just wanted to go home. I just wish I was in bed. I wanna be under the covers. I just wanna cry. I wanna eat some ice cream. I just want my like, comfort. <sighs> After just pulling over to the side, I had to sit with the fact that my foot got ran over by a fucking car. I texted my friend and told him like, hey, I just got my foot ran over by a car. I can't go to the gym anymore. You just go ahead. My friend was really sweet enough, came back for me. I sent him my location. He was freaking the fuck out. To me, I was really calm about it because I was just in shock. Usually when I'm in shock, I'm unusually calm about things. But my friend was freaking out because he was like, Fuck, you just got your foot fucking ran over. You need to go to the hospital. You need to get an x-ray. Like, your foot is probably broken. Take you to the hospital right now. Like, you can get on my bike. We can take a car or whatever. He finds out that there's a hospital right around the corner. He asks me, like, do you want to leave your bike here? Like, what should we do? And honestly, like, I was okay. Like, I just wanted, I told him I just wanted to go home and, like, cry. And he said, no, you, we have to go to the hospital. Okay, he asks me if I'm okay to ride my bike. And I said, yeah, I'm okay to ride my bike. Surprisingly, because at that moment, especially sitting on the side of the road, I realized it just felt like something really hard just fell on my foot. This, it helps that I wore fucking sneakers when I was riding my motorbike. A van ran over my foot. Uh, I take my motorbike there. It's a little hard to ride my motorbike, but not, I wouldn't say like not enough for me to not be able to ride the motorbike. I'm a little stubborn like that. We show up at this hospital. Uh, I sit in the waiting area and my friend is trying to talk to the staff about the fact that I got my foot ran over. And the staff doesn't speak like the best English. They speak like very, very minimal English. Telling, and they're telling my friend that you have to go to another hospital. We can't like check your friend's foot here. And he's really frustrated about it because like right in front of this hospital or this clinic, it says emergency services, but they can't check on me and we're not quite sure why. Uh, so they're trying to direct us to another hospital. And uh, they're telling us, oh, there's a hospital right around the corner. You should go there. And my friend, like, bless his heart, he's like, She can't go. She got her foot ran over by a car. She can't even walk. And they were trying to tell us that this hospital was directly, like, next door. Hey, don't worry about it. I'll just walk to this hospital. Like, like it's not, like, that big of a deal. We go into the hospital, into this bigger hospital next door. And we try to find someone who speaks English to let them know what's happening. Not a lot of people there really speak English. So it's it's a little frustrating at that point. We try to use Google Translate and Google Translate isn't the best when it comes to translating like Vietnamese to English or English to Vietnamese. Um, it'll get there one day. At this hospital, we only waited like 
10 minutes until like a doctor came out and this doctor actually spoke a little bit spoke spoke a little bit more english than the other staff uh and he examined my foot so i took so i took my sneaker off and you can see that there's just bruises and maybe a little scrape on my foot it doesn't look that big of a deal he like firmly presses on my foot and checks to see if everything's okay to see if there's any broken bones and my foot is fine my friend is freaking out saying like she needs an x-ray a car ran over her foot she needs an x-ray right now like you're just you're just examining her foot you're just touching her foot and like as he touched it yes it hurt but it actually didn't feel like anything was broken it felt like it was just like bruised up and beaten up i was asking the doctor if it was a sprain and i was asking him like what to do to treat my foot and the doctor just told me to put ice on it frozen shrimp and frozen veggies i even asked if it was a sprain and the doctor was like it's not even a sprain like your foot is just your foot is just bruised up and bless my friend's fucking heart he was really stern on trying to make sure like i got the best help he was really insistent on getting my, like, my foot checked and making sure everything is okay getting an x-ray honestly if i did that by myself i probably like i like i probably wouldn't have gone to the hospital so my foot's and my foot's fine it's like complete like it doesn't hurt anymore i can do this i can do that like honestly I don't know how I survived, how I got so lucky. I just want to say, if you plan to drive a motorbike in Southeast Asia, wear sneakers, wear clothes, toed shoes, because they will save your life. Because if I wore sandals when that car ran over my foot, I probably would have lost a toe or would have had broken, like, a, I would have had a broken foot. But this is the shoe that I wore when I got my foot ran over. And I just want to say, Thank you so much, Converse, for saving my life. Um, this girl loves to shake her booty. I don't know what she would do if she couldn't stand up properly and shake her booty the way that she wants to. Anyways, that is my story time video. I hope you enjoyed it. I hope this teaches you that if you ever come to Southeast Asia, wear shoes when you drive your motorbike. It's so funny getting my foot ran over because if that happened in the States, bam, it's like $30,000, bitch. Scribe. 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 Say please subscribe. Please subscribe. <laughs>